Hey, what is going on, all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. If we go back and list all the stuff the year 2020 was known for, what are some of the things that people would think of? Well, let's see. I mean, do you guys know of anything that comes to mind? I don't know. Do you? Do you? Do you? Other than the fact that we proved how dumb the human race can be when a large portion of our population started panic buying and hoarding toilet paper, the only other thing that comes to mind is, well, the COVID pandemic. Amongst many other industries and operations, the COVID pandemic completely decimated the motor coach industry. Well, here we are today, as I'm sitting on this empty coach bus talking to myself about random bus facts. Wow. You guys ever have one of those what am I doing with my life moments? Um, where was I going with all this? Oh, right. Uh, it's now been just over two years after the pandemic hit and things are starting to return to normal. Well, not everything. Unlike 2020 when the pandemic hit, today the travel industry is actually booming again. I mean, there's a huge demand for motor coach travel. In fact, for most of the motor coach industry here in the US, if you didn't book your bus with at least two months notice, you're probably gonna be told by many motor coach companies out there that they're all booked up. So life must be pretty good then, right? I mean, all must be blissful in the motor coach world with all that demand. Well, the answer to that is gonna be a big fat no. Amongst many others in the industry out there, we in the bus and motor coach side of things are still feeling the aftermath of the COVID pandemic. And on top of that, just when the world thought it could take a big sigh of relief from all that COVID stuff, Comrade Putin here had to have a midlife crisis and try to start a world war. Your average Joe would just go out and spend their life savings on a Corvette or something, but no, not the super rich and powerful people. No, they fixed their insecurities by launching large scale attacks on neighboring countries, killing millions of people and raising the prices on almost everything that we rely on. Well, anyways, today we're gonna take a look at four things that are killing the motor coach industry. Things that are literally still causing privately owned bus companies to close their doors, even though the demand for travel is so high now. Now, I've actually done a video solely on the topic of bus driver shortage a while ago, as well as mentioned this issue on several occasions in other videos. I mean, I've even been on the news talking about it recently. We've turned away so many, a lot of people got sold out to, uh, sold out messages simply because we just don't have enough drivers uh, in our driving force to um, handle the load. But we're slowly rebuilding the fleet and our driving force so that we can accommodate numbers closer to uh, what we had before COVID. It's very hard these days to find people that actually want to work and it's not just in the motor coach industry. I mean, the entire world is facing a labor shortage and the most affected industries are well, the service industries. Restaurants are closing, not because they aren't getting business, but because they can't find enough servers to serve their paying customers. Retail stores and gas stations are closing early because they can't find anyone to work their stores. Airlines are canceling thousands of flights because they can't find enough flight attendants and pilots and other support crews to keep the system going. And city transit authorities, along with yours truly in the private coach bus industry, are canceling routes and turning travelers away because well, we can't find anyone to operate the buses. The only difference is city transit authorities get bailed out when they turn away passengers wanting to ride their buses. I mean, their doors will never close from turning away business because they operate on tax dollars instead of profit. For us private mom and pop bus owners and all the employees that are within these companies, well, we don't have a safety net like the municipally owned city transit agencies. Even after barely surviving COVID, many privately operated coach bus companies are still in danger of losing their businesses and closing their doors because they have to turn away or cancel previously made bookings from paying customers due to the fact that they simply don't have enough drivers to drive them. Now, some larger bus operations have the resources to weather this drought, but nevertheless, the workforce deficit is definitely something that is severely affecting the motor coach industry today. Many companies are combating this by raising the wages and salaries for drivers significantly to try to draw in drivers as well as spending a lot of money on advertising for hiring campaigns. But for some reason, it just doesn't seem to be working. One of the highest expenses a owner of a bus company has to face is fueling up the tanks of their buses. 
Now, on average, most make and model of motor coaches here in North America have a diesel tank capacity of between 200 to 300 gallons. Now, that's 750 to 1,140 liters to the rest of the world. As far as miles per gallon goes, most make and models of coach buses here in North America get around six to nine miles per gallon. Now, at this point in time, as I'm making this video, Google's reporting that diesel prices in Illinois are between five to 5.50 a gallon. Let's just say that your customers book your buses to go on trips every day that are about 350 miles round trip. Google, calculate that up for me, please. Unable to comply. Oh, for heaven's Internal sense. scanner relays have been damaged. Oh, Let's see, um, carry the five. Well, that comes out to be about $300 worth of diesel for that bus for that 350 mile round trip. So if you ran that bus every day on that 350 mile round trip, that comes out to be about $9,000 a month. Well, now let's say you have 10 buses in your fleet and all of them ran 350 miles a day, which really isn't a lot for a standard motor coach trip. That comes out to be about $90,000 a month on fuel. Now keep in mind that $90,000 doesn't include the driver's wages or salary, the monthly insurance for your fleet, and the repair bill you just got for changing the tires, etc. So how are motor coach companies surviving with these crazy fuel price increases? Well, just like every other business out there, privately owned bus companies are raising prices. I mean, by a lot. The rate to charter a motor coach for your outing have more than doubled since before the pandemic. So what that means is all of a sudden, Bobby now has to sell 5,000 chocolate bars for his school fundraiser in order to go on his school trip to Six Flags at the end of the year instead of just 25. God, I sold a lot of those chocolate bars when I was a kid. I don't know if those are good memories or bad. Aside from raising prices, some companies have started to look into the all-electric coach bus fleet. As EV technology becomes more and more advanced, many are starting to think about the benefits of never having to purchase fuel again. The only problem with that is most all electric buses only have a range of about 250 to 300 miles before they need to do a two to four hour recharge. And if little Bobby's school field trip is 350 miles away, well, that's just not gonna cut it. As I'm sure most of you have noticed, everything all of a sudden got super expensive. From the aforementioned fuel prices, to grocery bills, and to eating out. I mean, that's just ridiculous right now. Well, that's also true for bus parts right now. Not only have prices for bus parts gone up, they're also very scarce. From alternators to pulleys and engines and transmissions and everything in between. Many bus and trucking companies are just not able to get any right now because there's a shortage of them. The lack of available parts from dealerships and repair facilities is causing havoc in the bus and motor coach industry right now, along with the trucking industry or any industry that relies on these parts to keep their fleet going. It's bad enough to have to turn away so many paying passengers wanting to book a trip with your company because you don't have the drivers. Now, all of a sudden, you have to turn away another one because the part supplier is telling you that the suspension piece you need to repair your bus is three months back ordered. So now you have a bus that you're still making payments and paying insurance for sitting there because you can't get the part to put it back out on the road. Many companies have resorted to cannibalizing other buses in their fleet just to scavenge for parts that they can't get their hands on. And it all goes in a giant circle. I mean, all these parts manufacturers can't find workers to come in to operate their factories, which is causing the parts shortage, which is causing prices to go up. I mean, it's just a vicious circle. Now, I've heard this from a lot of people lately. Is it me or are people acting more whiny and entitled these days? Now, at first I kind of dismissed this when I first heard several people mentioned this in restaurants and grocery stores, but lately I definitely noticed this myself. Now, for the most part, Pure Charter has really good reviews online and we actually have a really good reputation with our clients and our student riders, but I have seen some pretty crazy stuff happen lately. Things like, for example, passengers that miss their bus and try to blame it all on the bus company. What does it mean, exact change? <laughs> What's worse is, if they're student riders, even their parents get behind them and start egging them on, threatening all kinds of stuff from lawsuits to trying to 
cancel us on social media. Just because Junior wasn't there to board the bus at departure time, I mean, how is that our fault? I mean, maybe these parents should teach their kids something about being accountable for their own actions instead of teaching them to be keyboard warriors on the internet trying to cancel the livelihoods and income of a bunch of hardworking people from a mom and pop establishment. I don't know, just a thought. Somehow the other 54 passengers got on the bus at the bus stop, but Junior here missed it. I mean, it's pretty obvious that this is not the bus company's fault. But that's the kind of stuff I've been seeing all over the place. And no, it's not just happening to Puria Charter or even bus companies. I mean, I'm talking about from retail store employees to restaurant servers. And we wonder why the service industry is facing a labor shortage. Who would want to come back to an environment where they have to serve people with no empathy and get abused every day by entitled folk that don't know how to think critically before they act. Well, if any one of you viewers out there either work in or operate a bus company, let us know down in the comments below just how you guys are coping with all of today's hardships that we're facing. Also, if you can think of anything else that's hurting the bus and motor coach world that I left out in this video, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to read about it. And finally, before I end today's video, I do have an announcement to make. Last year, Bus and Motor Coach News invited me to cover the United Motor Coach Association Annual Expo in Long Beach, California. This is North America's largest vehicle show for the coach industry. I made a few videos on my other vlog channel if you guys wanna check it out. I also live streamed the opening of the showroom uh, on this channel, which I'll put the links down in the description box below if you guys wanna check them out. Well, UMA and I had so much fun working together on these expos. Not only are they inviting me back for the next expo event, but they've asked me to expand my team for the next event so that they can get the word out about all the cool innovations and happenings in the industry. If you have a YouTube channel or other type of media presence on the bus and motor coach industry, then please reach out to Chandra Martinez to see if you can qualify to be part of the media coverage of the next event. You'll have exclusive access to see the newest vehicles and products, interview industry leaders about the latest trend, and much more. Spots are limited on this, but it includes free access to the entire UMA Expo, which takes place January 11th to the 14th in Orlando, Florida. You'll also get a reduced rate on your hotel room. I mean, if this sounds like something you want to do and you want on your social media channel or YouTube channel, be sure to reach out to Chandra Martinez by October 1st. With that said, I'll put Chandra's contact info down in the description box below. Well, folks, as always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.